It's the 18th of December 2020 and uh, I'm recording the chapter 5 video. Uh, this chapter 5 is uh, part of the AS level syllabus which is the mitotic cell cycle and we're talking about 9700, the biology syllabus for CIE and we will start discussing the different uh, stages of mitosis and of course beginning it we'll start with what is a chromosome. First we have to understand that the number of chromosomes is specific to every species and uh, as we know from all levels that the humans have 46 chromosomes. Okay, So why means 46 chromosomes means the diploid number or 2n is equal to 46. But actually these are 23 pairs. So chromosomes are always found in pairs so that's why you're going to see all these are even numbers. Now in monkeys they are 42, so that would be that would be 21 pairs. In a dog it's 78. In a cat it's 38. In corn it's 20. In potato plants there will be 48 chromosomes in each cell. In a yeast, which is a unicellular, will have 32 chromosomes. So every species has a specific number of chromosomes. Now you usually refer to 46 all the time but please remember that's only in humans and if in the exam or in the paper there is a question on some other species and maybe it's on fruit flies or maybe it's on a potato plant or on a corn plant well this the specific number would be specified or even if it is not specified well you must understand that the chromosome number is going to be different it's not going to be the same as humans humans have a chromosome number of 46 and at times in your papers you write that so this is the first thing that we've got to understand is that the chromosome number is specific for every species. Now as we look at a chromosome number, like for instance I say something 2n is equal to 4. 4 means that this cell and the nucleus of this cell would have 4 chromosomes. So I'm giving it two different colors. So I'm giving it black and red. So if I say 2n is equal to 4, then this is one chromosome. But when this cell has to divide and form two cells, well, both of them have to receive four. Now, how can that happen? Now, that can only happen if each of the chromosomes forms an identical copy. And the copy of it is called a chromatid. So, there will be four reds and similarly, there will be four blacks. Now, this is exactly what has happened here that this one chromosome has now become two chromatids and that's what is called sister chromatids and this happens in DNA replication which we study in the next chapter. So the DNA replication, replica means an exact, exact clone or an exact copy. So this was the one which was the original one and then we have this other one which has been formed, let me give it another color. And this is an exact copy of it. But then it's joined here. It's joined for a short while. And the area where it's joined is called a centromere. Centro. Central. So chrom this would be a chromosome. And these would be two sister chromatids. So when DNA replication has taken place, so that is why what I'm saying here is that the four chromosomes will have become eight chromatids here. And then when the cell divides, there'll be four in this and four in this. So there'll be two reds and two blacks. Similarly here also, you'll have two reds and two blacks, which was in the original cell. So please try to understand that the DNA replicates so whatever the chromosome number is which is the diploid number this is going to double so the diploid number is 4 so it's going to become 8 if the diploid number was 46 the diploid number will become 92 and so on and so forth if the diploid number was 20 then DNA replication will take place and will form 40 chromatids so one chromosome but when the copy is formed, it's called sister chromatids. 
then we have to understand a little more about chromosomes and here as we can see the ends are protected areas where there is a special area which is called telomeres. So these are the ends. Just like we have on the shoelaces, we have the ends which are covered with the plastic just to protect them. So telomeres. So telomeres are there, telomeres are here at the, both the ends. So this area up here is called the telomere, this area here is called the telomere here and here. Then on the entire chromosome we have genes. And you can see gene is a small section of the chromosome which is going to code for different characteristics like we can say gene for eye color, gene for hair color. And it's made up of several thousand genes. And the area where it's held together is called the centromere. Please understand this area holds the two chromatids together but there are no genes. There are no genes here. This does not code for any because genes usually code for proteins. So every gene codes for a protein and that is why that determines the characteristic because if it would be an enzyme, that enzyme would catalyze a reaction and a certain uh, color would be deposited in the eyes, the pigment in the eye and you would have brown eyes or blue eyes. Now there are two identical chromatids and they make one chromosome. And the important thing is each chromatid is one DNA molecule. So this is one DNA molecule and that's another DNA molecule. So please understand that is each chromatid. So these are two DNA molecules. Of course the study of the structure of DNA would be in the next chapter. So Number one, the ends called telomeres. The central area where it's joined is called the centromere. And then each chromosome is made up of two. When it duplicates, then it's called two chromatids. And each chromatid contains one DNA molecule. Then we have uh, the important thing is that the DNA is a long, thin string and uh, in order to facilitate for it to fit into the nucleus you need to wind it just like a long thread that we have you wind it around a spool so here what we do is we've got eight histones you can see these eight histones and this will be marked here and these eight histones you can see one two three four and then at the bottom also we have four so eight histones, now this is going to be called a nucleosome. And the DNA that links it is called the linker DNA. Now this whole thing which is this going to rotate around it twice has 147 base pairs. And the linker DNA has 53 base pairs. This linker DNA from here to here as 53 base pairs. Then the chrome, the material, the chromosome which is made of the material, we give it two names. Number one is called euchromatin which is loosely coiled. So in different stages the chromosome is loosely or tightly coiled. When it is loosely coiled it is called euchromatin. But when it is tightly coiled it is called heterochromatin and that is the time when they are inactive genes. We just talk about that in mitosis a little later. So the two names that you have to remember, euchromatin when it's loosely coiled and heterochromatin when it is tightly coiled. Now before we start the process of mitosis which is a type of cell division. Now this type of cell division results in the same chromosome number as the parent cells. So if the chromosome number is 46 then the daughter cells will also have 46 chromosomes. So we are studying mitosis as opposed to this you will study in A2 will be meiosis. Now that is different that only happens in reproductive organs and it is called the reduction division because the chromosome number is halved. But in this mitosis the cell division is where every everywhere in the body this cell division is taking place and it's got a very important role to play in growth and uh, cell replacement and repair of tissues 
and asexual reproduction. But first we have to understand there has to be a cell cycle. Now the cell cycle is, uh, I've drawn a sort of a circle to show you the cycle. Now there is the major part is the interphase. And you can see, I mean the large part of this pizza, this part of the pizza is all interphase. So the three quarter of the circle is the interphase. Now the interphase is divided into three different parts, the three different stages. Now the first stage is called G1 and the second stage is called S phase and I'm just coloring it in purple. This is called the S phase of interphase. S phase of interphase because this whole was called interphase. So this is the G1 of interphase, then S phase of interphase and then we have the G2 phase of interphase. So interphase has three different G1, S and G2. So this whole area will be the interphase and then of course we have the red part is divided into four sections. So P, M, A and T. Now this area is called mitosis. And please remember mitosis is actually, I mean, if you look at it, it's not it's part of cell division, but it's nuclear division. It's only nuclear division. But we, we, th we say it is part of cell division, so it's just the nucleus dividing. So the entire mitosis is nuclear division, but then of course the cell divides later on and then this part, which is the green part, is called cytokinesis. Cytokinesis meaning when the cell, the cytoplasm is going to divide. So cytokinesis. A simple way to remember this is I have a purple mat. So I is interface which is made up of G1 S and G2. P will be prophase, M will be metaphase, A will be anaphase and T will be telophase. So prophase P, metaphase M, A anaphase, T telophase. And then of course we have cytokinesis which is not part of the nuclear division but it is when the cytoplasm divides and here then by this time the two cells will have formed. It starts from here. We start the process of cell division starts here. Uh, in the G1 phase uh, we have a lot of RNA being made, enzymes being made because you see we are now preparing for uh, the cells to divide. So we need a lot of proteins, a lot of activities taking place. Organelles will replicate like mitochondria if they are 10 will become 20. Ribosomes if they are 40 they will become 80. So a lot of activity takes place and a lot of amino acids are needed for the G1 phase. So G1 is growth 1 and this is part of, this is all this is part of the interphase. Now in S phase, S phase of interphase, we say S phase of interphase this is going to be S for synthesis of DNA. Then DNA replication and this is a very short phase. So it's not a very long one, doesn't take a very long time, it's a very short phase. And in the last phase which is G2, DNA is checked and the errors are repaired so that because the cell is start going to start, uh, uh, the nucleus is going to divide and then the cell is going to divide. So uh, DNA is checked and the errors will be repaired.
Now, as you look at this central area where they are attached, that's called the centromere. But then you see another very important thing is there's something known as called the kinetochore. Now, this is where the microtubules are going to attach. Now, the microtubules are part of the spindle which is going to form so as to pull these, to separate them and pull them apart. So, the centromere is needed for the separation of the chromatids during mitosis. Uh, each metaphase chromosome has two kinetochores. So, this kinetochore is the area which is just, you know, as it's labeled here, the kinetochore is the area just outside the centromere and that is where the microtubules are going to attach. So, we need to know these names, centromere, kinetochore and microtubules. The centromere is a constricted region of the chromosome where the kinetochore forms and the spindle microtubules attach. Now let's start discussing the centrioles and the centrosome and the role of uh, them. And please remember these are only found in animal cells. First of all, they're not found in plant cells. Now the poles of the spindle are where the centrosomes are located. So the end, this is the, we don't call them ends, we call them the poles, like north pole, south pole. Please do not say end, end will not be accepted. So the poles of the spindle are where the centrosome. Now the centrosomes are basically made up of what? They are a pair of centrioles and around them are a large number of proteins. So the centrosome itself consists of these centrioles, as you can see here in this diagram. And then there's the centrosome matrix. And then from these radiate out the microtubules. That's why we call this MTOC, microtubule organizing center. And the centrosome is just the proteins which are going to be found around the centrioles. And the centrioles are these two rod-shaped structures. You can see these rod-shaped structures, just like two markers, I would hold them. So two rod-shaped structures, which are of course made up of a number of microtubules. We've done the details in the chapter one. So this is what we need to know about the centrosome and uh, the centrioles. Please do not mix this with the centromeres. That's a totally different thing. Now, as we look at the details of mitosis, as we said, this is four stages, P, M, A, T. Now, I'm going to take a cell uh, in which the diploid number is six. So that means the nucleus has six chromosomes. Now, I'm going to use separate colors to explain these, though they're not colored, they're not colored in the cell. So we have six chromosomes. Now you can see I've drawn three pairs and I've given them three colors. But please remember now that as first in this, this cell in interphase, first in G1, then S phase and G2 phase must have gone through all these. So in S phase, this DNA must have replicated so that instead of six now, there will be 12 chromatids. So the purple ones will have all got copies. So four purples, then we'd have four greens, and then we'd have four black. So now we have 12 chromatids. So now we would have 12 chromatids because each chromosome will have formed a copy of it and now they will be called. So I'm just going to draw these again. So we have one black and we have its copy and it's joined here at the centromere. Similarly, we have another black and its copy. So we have four of these. Then we have the two greens, the original one, two. And now we have a copy of it and they're joined here at the centromere. And then similarly, you see this position of the centromere would be the same. It's a very important pair. And then we would have another one here. So you'd have two purple ones, which were the original number was six. And now we have another. So we have now four of these. 
So this is how DNA replication will have taken place. DNA replication takes place in S phase. S phase of interphase. So DNA replication would have taken place in S phase of interphase. And now G2 would have also taken place. And now we're going to have, we're going to start with mitosis. And mitosis, we're going to have prophase. Then metaphase. Then anaphase. And then telophase. Now there's a very easy way to remember these. And uh, it's going to become very easy for you to remember these different stages. Now, as you look at the first um, phase, which is prophase, now I ask you to remember it that they, you can actually, on a micrograph, you can see the chromatid. So I say they become prominent. P for prophase, P for prominent. And that's when you pick up the micrographs, which we do right at the end of this video. So now you can see, because what has happened, they have shortened and condensed. Now, Chromosomes start to appear as the chromatin coils up, becoming shorter and thicker. And then what is happening is that the centrosomes replicate. So the centrosomes have replicated and now they are moving to the poles. Now, nuclear envelope starts to disappear. It breaks up into small vesicles which are not visible with a light microscope. And the nucleolus disappears. Well, disappears means that they will actually just go into the cytoplasm because they have to be reformed again. So nucleolus disappears, nuclear envelope disappears, and now you can see the chromosome as two identical chromatids. So this is one chromosome and an identical chromatid with it. So we've got the two blacks, the two greens, and the two purples. Now each chromatid contains one DNA molecule. Now the next stage is metaphase. Now how I ask you to remember it is remember it from the word middle. But please do not use the word middle because the word that has to be used is the equator. Middle is sort of not very exact. Biologically it's incorrect. So they line up at the equator and they are going to now split at the centromere. The chromatids are going to be pulled apart by the microtubules. And during this phase now, the centromere, uh, cent the centrosomes, the centrosomes have reached the poles. So the centrosomes have reached the poles, which is the centriole with the proteins around it, is called the centrosome. So in metaphase, please remember M for metaphase, M for middle. And, but we're going to use the word equator, just like in geography we use the word equator. So the, now the centromeres are going to split and now they're going to separate and they're going to move now to the opposite poles. Now in uh, anaphase, uh, in Urdu we say alag. Uh, alag means to sort of get apart, so they're going to move apart. And uh, the chromatids are now separated. Now the sister chromatids are no longer sister. They are now chromosomes. And they are now going to move to the opposite pole. So at this level, they're here. But very soon, they're going to move upwards. So these are going to come here. And these ones, which were here, are going to come up here. So we call of early anaphase and late anaphase. So they're going to be moving this way. They're going to be moving towards the pole. So this is going to move here, and this is going to move there. And then we're going into the next phase, which is called telophase. Now the last phase of mitosis is called telophase. And I tell you to remember it because what is it going to contain? It's going to contain two nucleuses. Now please remember this is one cell containing two nucleuses. And there's a very typical MCQs which check whether you understand this or not. So this is one cell, but it has two nucleuses in it and both of them have six chromosomes in it, which was the original number. Now the nucleolus will start to reform. The nucleolus will start to reform. The nuclear envelope reforms. This is the nuclear envelope which is reformed. So the nuclear envelope which had disappeared now reforms. Chromatids had reached the poles and now the chromosomes will now uncoil again and they'll be thread-like structures and you'll not be able to see them 
under the microscope because previously when they were able to see they were shortened and condensed now they are again going to uncoil and become thin thread like structures so you will not be able to see them after this the mitosis ends so mitosis was just prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase now what has to happen is cytokinesis please remember this is not a part of this is not part of mitosis now in cytokinesis in animal cells it's slightly different is that division of the cytoplasm is going to take place and there's going to be constriction from the edges of the cell and then finally this one cell is going to form and then this other cell is going to form and then they're going to separate out but in plant cells this is not the case in plant cells what was to happen is that the new cell wall has to be formed and as it is in plant cells there are no centrosomes so new cell wall has to be formed and then the cell is going to be divided into two cells so it's slightly different in animal cells and slightly different in plant cells uh, now as the syllabus says explain the importance of mitosis in the production of genetically identical daughter cells and the four reasons they have given you is number one growth growth of multicellular organisms growth of multicellular organisms please remember uh, if it's a prokaryote it's a unicellular organism if it's a yeast it's a unicellular organism so please do not confuse this with that so growth of multicellular organisms like for instance a plant has to grow a human being has to grow a lizard has to grow now that can only be possible by mitosis you see the other way possible was if its cell size increased but no the cell size is a limiting factor you can't have a huge cell because all the nutrients cannot enter by diffusion if it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger because as it becomes bigger the surface area to volume ratio decreases we've talked about this in a previous chapter so number one growth of multicellular organisms number two it's replacement of damaged or dead cells like for instance your red blood cells have to be replaced because they die you a small percentage of it dies every day so replacement of damaged or dead cell or if you've damaged yourself you sprained your ankle or something or you cut your hand so this will have to be replaced the third is the most important one which you confuse and you get this wrong is repair of tissues please do not say repair of cells they're going to check that if you know that in the mcq repair of tissues like for instance somebody has an appendectomy of course then the skin has to repair the muscle which was cut has to repair so it's a repair of tissues can't be repair of cells cells cannot so repair of tissues by cell replacement so the cells have to be replaced and the fourth most important one is asexual reproduction like for instance if you've got to grow sugar cane well all you have to do is just take one sugar cane cut it up into pieces and just plant them in the soil now how do they grow they grow by asexual reproduction and that is by mitosis so they're going to grow and they're going to develop the roots all is by asexual reproduction we go into more details as we go on to the next video which we will explain these in a further more detail and finish this chapter in the next video thank you